Ms. Richman. And this is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 9.3, Lesson Summary. Uh, again, continuing our study of circles. And we're going to start to do proofs for the first time in the book. So make sure you follow the book. Um, I'm not going to be able to do all the proofs um, in the video as, as usual. It'll be more dependent upon your teacher to help you out with that, working through them in the book. But I will show one. Um, and from those proofs, you're going to come up with several theorems. Now I'm going to talk about the three major theorems that you do in this section and how you can use them in problems, and then we'll actually show the proof for one of them. Um, be advised though, when it gets to test time, your teacher could use any of these proofs potentially on the test. So the first theorem that we find is the interior angle of a circle theorem. So if you have an angle inside the circle that is not formed by the center, because if it was formed by the center, we'd know the measure based on the arc but is formed somewhere in the interior without being on the center of the circle, we call that an interior angle. Its measure is always equal to one half the sum of the arcs it forms. So if I want to find the measure of angle DOC, this angle here, DOC, it's going to be equal to one half the sum of these two arcs. So I add arc DC and AB together, the ones formed by the vertical angles there, and cut them in half. Now because AOB is a vertical angle to that, it too would equal the same thing, one half the measure of arc DC plus the measure of arc AB. So um, it too would have the same formula. The other theorems that we learn are the exterior angles of a circle theorem. An exterior angle measure is one half the difference of the intercepted arcs it forms. So if you have an outside angle here, it's called angle BAC, that's being formed outside the triangle using either tangents or secants within it, you can always find its measure by looking at the arcs it forms. Uh, it forms this arc here with its lines, BC and DC. And the formula for that is that the measure of angle BAC would equal the measure of arc DC, which is usually the larger one, the one that's farther out from the angle, that's the one you always put first, otherwise you end up with negative answers and that shouldn't happen here in geometry. Arc DC minus arc BC divided by 2. So similar formulas. For the interior, you're adding them. For the exterior, you're subtracting them. Okay? Um, and lastly, you need to know that the tangent to a circle theorem states that a line tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius of the circle drawn to the point of tangency. So any tangent you, line you have coming through the side of a circle will always be perpendicular to the radius that connects it. So I drew one where you could clearly see it's perpendicular, and then I took one where I slid the tangent here. But no matter where you move that tangent on the circle, whatever radius you draw from the center to its intersection point makes a perpendicular line, uh, which means, or perpendicular 90 degree angle, means that you start to get a potential right triangle. Okay, and you'll see when we do these problems, and I tried to choose ones that I thought were a little tougher um, than just straightforward plugging into the formula. Um, that sometimes you'll have to think and combine these two get answers. This is a bit of a tougher test in that sense, okay? You can't just, you know, copy the theorem and it'd be good to go. You have to be able to think and problem solve a little bit. Um, so let's try. In this problem, I want to find the measure of angle XOY. That'd be this angle here, XOY. Now you notice I have no arc measures to even work with there. So I, I, at, a, at first you might be thinking, I have no way of doing it, but there's other things you can find. So just start finding whatever information you can. I do know that these interior angles here can be found. So let's say the measure of angle Y of Z can be found by doing one half the sum of arcs YZ plus XW. And so let's see what that would be real quick. Those mark measure, uh, Sorry, those arc measures are 70 degrees at 130 degrees, which adds up to 200. Half of 200 would equal 100. So I know that the measure of angle YOZ is 100 degrees using my interior angle of a circle theorem. So if this is 100 degrees, okay, and I'm forming a linear pair here with X O Y, I now know angle X O Y has to be 80. So be ready to use multiple concepts. I use the concepts of the circles, the interior angles of the circle theorem, combined with the, my knowledge of linear pairs to get that. Example two. Now I have uh, an exterior angle being formed on the outside. The problem states if that exterior angle on the outside, measure of angle T here is 70 degrees, 
and this arc SU is 40 degrees, what is the measure of arc RQU? Now, since I have an exterior angle, I'm going to want to start by setting up my exterior angle um, theorem because that's likely going to be my only path to success. So let's write it. The measure of angle T equals one half the measure of the larger arc it forms, arc RQU minus, remember it's the difference for exterior angles, arc SU. So I at least have a formula to work with, a theorem to work with, and let's see what might come about with it. So I know the measure angle T is 70, so I can actually plug that in on the left side. Um, I don't know the measure of arc RQU is what I'm trying to find, but it is being subtracted by the measure of arc SU, and the measure of arc SU is 40 degrees. Well, now I potentially have a chance to solve this. I have 1 half times this equals 70. Rather than distribute that algebra the 1 half right away, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 70 times 2, 140 degrees. If I multiply this side by 2, the half goes away, and I no longer need the parentheses. So it's just the measure of arc QU minus 40 degrees equals 140. Last step, I can add 40 over to both sides. And the measure of arc RQU should equal then, by that math, 180 degrees. Now that would be my drawings not to scale, and obviously this time it isn't. Otherwise that would look more like a semicircle. But I'm going to go with that because we use the correct formula. Okay, last example here, um, AC is tangent to uh, the circle, circle B. B, A is a radius then. And the, the measure of arc AD is 60 degrees. What is the measure of angle ACB? Well, as soon as I have a tangent in any sort of radius, I know now from my last theorem, tangent to circle theorem, that this angle form has to be a right angle. Now, I have a triangle, which means if I can get two of these angles, I'm good to go. Uh, possibly even an exterior angle in some situations, I'll be good to go. But let's see what I can get. They gave me arc AD. Arc AD is formed by a central angle, angle B here. And central angles are equal to their arcs. So I know the measure of angle ABC has to be 60 degrees. I know the measure of angle BAC has to be 90 degrees because of my perpendicular rule. So now I have two angles in the triangle. I have 90, I have 60. I can use the uh, interior angles of a triangle theorem to come up with what it should be. The interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180. I've got 90 and 60. I can just subtract those out. And that has to be the measure of angle A, C, B. 90 minus 60 is 30 degrees. And so you can see again now, I'm really trying to force you to use all the concepts you've used in geometry so far. So we, uh, um, we threw in some vertical angles, we threw in linear pairs, we even threw in the interior angles of a triangle type theorems in here. So hopefully that helps you get started. Now the proofs here are a little different, can be a little tricky, but let's try this one here and, and see how we do. So this is going to actually prove one of the theorems that we've been using. Um, it says secant JL and tangent NL intersect at point L on the outside, and that the measure of angle L should be one half arc JM minus arc KM. Okay? So let's try to prove that. So, not all of these, but I would say the majority of the proofs that you do in this chapter are going to require you to make some sort of triangle, because um, that's what's going to really allow you to open up um, into a lot of different theorems. So, that's the first thing I look to do is can I draw anything to make a triangle? So like all our other proofs, we do start with the givens. So I put secant JL and tangent NL intersect at point L, just like I normally start proofs. But what you're going to typically have to start in step two is some sort of construction. So I'm going to construct here, I already drew it for you, but I'm going to try to make a triangle. So I'm going to draw a chord, JM. Now anytime you take the diagram and do a legitimate construction with something that's valid, you just say your reason is construction. And it depends on the format of your teacher's test, but some will just start you off this way and then let you finish the proof. It just kind of depends on 
what they want to do. But that's kind of been a typical way of going about that. Now, another theorem here that you probably haven't used in a while but becomes really effective in this is the exterior angle of a triangle theorem. Um, back in chapter three, you learned that when you have a triangle like this, you have three, thing, uh, three angles that add up to 180, and then you have the tangent line which forms two angles that add up to 180. Well, then the outside angle, angle J, A, M, N, has to be equal to the opposite two angles, the, uh, the angles farthest away. So this angle here plus the other two angles in the triangle have to equal that. And that's honestly how a lot of these proofs will start. So angle M, J, L plus, I'm just going to call that other one, angle L. And that's called the, the exterior angle theorem for a triangle. And that usually will get you going the right way. Now next, once you've made a triangle, you've tried to set up with the extra angle theorem. For most proofs, I then now just try to get it in form of what you're trying to get to. I want to have angle L equal to something, so that's what I would do. I have a formula I can solve for angle L and isolate, so I'm going to do that. Angle L would be equal to angle JMN minus angle MJL. I just subtracted MJL to both sides isolate for angle L. Anytime I just subtract both sides, that is called the subtraction property. Okay? Now, from here I have this, but I'm in terms of angles. What I'm trying to prove is in terms of arcs. That's your next sign that you need to switch from talking about these as arcs, or sorry, as angles, and change it to being talked to as arcs. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I have angle JMN which I want to try to represent as an arc now, and I have angle MJL, which I want to try to represent as an arc, because then I have the ability to substitute it in and change the format. Angle JMN is an exterior angle of a circle and is always equal to the arc it creates. So if you look at the spread of that angle, it's equal to arc JM, okay? So that angle, is equivalent to arc JN, that's called the exterior angle of the circle theorem. Or you could call it exterior angle theorem uh, for short. But, uh, eh, you know, we used exterior angle up there, why don't we say exterior angle of a circle theorem? Just so we don't get them mixed up. Now, angle M. JL, angle MJL, actually forms an arc here, arc KM. And that is an inscribed angle because it's not made from the central, and we know inscribed angles are half their arc measure. So I can say angle MJL is one half, so I can say it's one half arc KM. Oh, and one half arc JM. I'm sorry, when I talk about the extra angle of the circle theorem, the exterior angle is actually one half the arc. So this should be one half arc JM, one half arc KM. My reason, inscribed, because that's what type of angle it is, theorem. And that states that it's half the measure of the arc it makes. Inscribed angle theorem. Now I'm starting to get on a roll. I have different ways of representing the angles. I can set them up as arcs. So the measure of angle L equals one half arc JM minus one half arc KM via substitution. And this is really the same thing as what I have here. If you look at it, if I was to distribute that, it would be the same. But I don't want it to be in a distributed form. I want to bring it back into what we call factor form. So I can say that the measure of angle L is equal to, they both are being times by one half. So I'm going to take that one half, I'm going to factor by the GCF. So when you take a common term out, that's called factoring. And so we are factoring by the GCF. Some teachers may just let you call that distribution property because that's technically the property I'm using. What I'm actually doing is factoring. Um, but since 
you might know it as that property more commonly, they might let you call it that. So again, the proofs can be tricky, but again, if you look to construct a circle and look for either the interior angles of a triangle theorem or exterior angle triangle theorem to get you started, you should be able to then just start plugging in arc measures for the angles that you've written and help you solve the proof. Thank you and good luck.